Mm. So we've talked a bit about in your Christianity how he has some arguments for the existence of God, or at least some arguments pointing towards Christianity. What is C.S. Lewis's argument from desire for God, and what is C.S. Lewis's conception of desire? Yeah, it's that's a really fundamental concept for Lewis, I think, because I mean it takes me back again to the idea of you know, why he became a Christian or how he conceives of that in his spiritual autobiography, surprised by joy. And that word joy there, I mean, that's actually a quotation from a sonnet by William Wordsworth, but the concept of joy, as Lewis explains it in that book, is quite technical and specific to him. And it's this idea that there is a kind of unsatisfied longing that he experiences at various points in his life. Something that, um, so joy sounds like something positive, but it's at the same time also something quite painful, a difficult a stab, he calls it, a stab, a pain, a feeling of desire, a yearning, but something that cannot be satisfied in this world. And he talks in, in the um, autobiography of these kind of key moments in his life where he's experienced that concept of joy. Um, going right the way back to his childhood, um, something that happens to him, something that he reads. You know, he talks about reading a particular poem um, which deals with the Norse god Balder. Um, and he says, at that point, I was transported into the great vast northern skies and I felt this great sense of intense longing. And what he, what he can't understand when he's you know, experiencing these, these stabs of joy at the time is what they're for because they can't be satisfied. And what he comes to, um, how he comes to understand it and rationalize it later is that the reason for this is that these desires, these longings cannot be satisfied because they can only be satisfied in heaven. They point him beyond this world. They're like sort of signs explaining or making him conscious of the idea that there is another world. And he says, you know, we're not born with desires unless there's, there is a satisfaction for those desires. So, you know, he says, for instance, the argument is that there's a baby that feels hungry uh, naturally. Well, there is such a thing as food. Um, so if we're born with a desire um, and yet nothing in this world can help to satisfy that desire, he argues that the most probable explanation for that is that he was made for another world. And so the, the argument from desire is really that those yearnings, those longings are pointing him to that other world. And in fact, when, when Surprised by Joy finishes, which is you know, with his conversion to theism, then Christianity. So although he wrote it in, in the early 50s, well, it was published in the early 50s, he started writing it in the late 40s. It really only takes him up to 1931, which is the point at which he became a Christian. And the reason for that is that it's a story about joy. And at that point, joy becomes kind of redundant in his life. You know, he says, what of joy? Well, that was what, it, once I've converted to Christianity, it, it had served its purpose. So do, does it seem like the argument for desire, just to clarify it, it seems more to be an argument for the existence of another life or another world instead of a particular argument for Christian theism, or do you, or does he later then develop how that desire, that satisfaction of that joy is Christianity as a religion itself? I think, I think the first of those is the right one, actually. Um, I think it's then a question of, you know, what you do with that desire once you've learned that there is, you know, something outside, something beyond that we have to look beyond this world for an explanation and an answer. You know, I think he, I think he felt that that as humans were often materialism has taught us to be too easily satisfied in our own world and that what we need is something that sort of um, wakes us up, jolts us out of that materialist, self-satisfied um, way of living um, and that recognising that joy um, is, is a way of doing that, making you think beyond this world.
Thank you for watching this short segment of an interview with Dr. Simon Horbin on C.S. Lewis. If you enjoyed this interview and want to watch the whole interview, you could check out the whole interview. The link will be in the description below. Furthermore, if you would like to listen to more interviews on leading scholars in the field, then make sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned to this channel. Also, if you would like to support us financially on Patreon to keep this mission sustainable and allow me to continue reaching out to these leading scholars, then consider checking us out on Patreon or YouTube memberships. Those would be brilliant ways to help support this platform. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next one. God bless and goodbye. I'll see you soon.